All right, in this video, we're going to go over how to solve equations, and this is something that you should have learned in pre-algebra, algebra, and then algebra 2. So you should have a strong base for how to do this. We're just going to kind of quickly go over how to do it. Um, so we're going to do a lot of stuff that probably took you weeks and weeks to learn. We're going to go over in one quick video here. First off, we're going to look at several types of equations to solve in this first part. The first type we're going to look at is simple linear equations. Those should be very, very easy as long as you follow the rules. The second type is um, fractional equations. And a lot of people, people get scared of fractional equations. You just got to remember things like get a common denominator, cross multiply, all those are kind of things that are going to help us solve equations with fractions. And the third type we're going to look at is quadratics. Um, we're going to talk about several ways to solve quadratics, but remember there's one basic idea that helps us solve quadratics, and that's called the zero product property. The zero product property says that if you have two things being multiplied, A times B, two variables being multiplied and A equals zero, one of those two things must be zero. So either A equals zero or B equals zero. So the zero product property allows us to actually split apart um, products of uh, expressions as long as they equal zero. So that's going to help us solve the quadratics. The fourth thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at some square root. Um, some square root equations. Remember to get rid of a square root, you need to square. So that's going to help us there. And the fifth type we're going to look at today is absolute value. And um, absolute value could be a little bit tricky. Absolute, I think we're getting A there. Anyway, absolute value equations can be a little bit tricky, but they're not too bad as long as you understand the basic idea. So let's start off with an easy, easy linear equation here. Notice there's no x squareds, no square roots, no fractions. All I see is the x to the first um, to a linear, meaning so it's a first degree. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to just distribute a little bit. So I get 2x minus 10 minus 7. Over here, I'm going to get 3x minus 6. Very simple. Combine like terms would be my next step. So on this side, I have a 2x and a negative 17. On the right-hand side, I have a 3x minus 6. All I did was combine like terms there. Now I'm going to get variables alone on both sides. I can move the 2x's over to the right, or I can move the 3x over to the left. It's completely up to you. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to move the 2x over, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, so I get x left with a negative 17 over here, minus 6. That was useful because now I have a 1x here, which is exactly what I'm solving for. Add 6 to the other side, and negative 17 plus 6 should be negative 11. So there's my final answer. Very, very simple. Plug it back in to check and make sure it works. All right, so linears are really, really easy. Let's move on to some fractional ones here. Now, the idea to this fractional one is very simple. You have two sides to the equation. You have the left side, and you have the right side. If I can get both sides to be one fraction instead of two fractions on each side, because technically this x could be treated as x over 1, if I can get both sides to be one fraction, then it's very simple to use the cross-multiplication rule. So very, very easy here. So on the right-hand side, let's see, I'm going to need a common denominator. My common denominator could be the lowest common denominator between the 4 and the 2. Another trick is if you have no idea how to find that, just multiply them. 4 times 2 is 8, but there is a lower common denominator, which would be 4. So this first guy is going to stay alone, 5x divided by 4. This guy, I want this 2 to be a 4, so I'm going to multiply by 2. 2 times 2 makes 4, but if I multiply the bottom, i got to multiply the top. So that's going to give me plus 2 fourths. So obviously, 1 half is the same as 2 fourths. Over here, I need a common denominator. It looks like I'm going to use 2. So this negative 1 half will stay the same, but I need a 2 down here. So I'll multiply it by 2. It means I've got to multiply the top by 2. So I get 2x over 2. Now I'm going to add these together. Obviously, now that I have common denominators, I get 5x plus 2 on top, all over 4. Over here, I get 2x minus 1 all over 2 on the bottom. Notice when you add a common denominator, the, the common denominator stays the same. You don't add those, 4 and 4. You don't say 8 or anything like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So when I go this way, let's see here, I get 10x plus 4. All I'm doing is distributing 2 times 5x, 2 times 2. Over here, I'm going to distribute as well. So I get 8x minus 4. And uh, again, 4 times 2, 4 times negative 1. Now I'm just going to go ahead and solve this basic linear equation. Subtract the 8x over to this side, I get 2x plus 4 equals negative 4. Go ahead and subtract 4 over, I get 2x equals negative 8. Divide both sides by 2, I get x equals negative 4. Notice that I'm not showing every single teeny tiny step along the way, I'm just trying to show enough because you guys should be advanced enough where you don't have to see every little tiny step. Alright, here's another fractional one with some x's on the bottom. 
So again, same kind of idea here is to get that common denominator. So I'm going to look at each side separately. The right-hand side appears to be okay, only because I have one fraction. So I'm, that kind of side's ready to go. On the left-hand side here, let's see if I can get one fraction. Well, again, what's the lowest common denominator between these two expressions, x minus 2 and x plus 3? Well, the easiest way is to just multiply them together. So if my common denominator becomes x minus 2, times x plus 3. This is going to be really, really nice. And let's see here. That means this guy has the x minus 2. I need to multiply the bottom by x plus 3, which I'm gladly can do as long as I multiply the top by x plus 3. I will have to distribute because that's an expression. So that's going to give me 1x plus 3. Coming back over here, this guy has the x plus 3. I need to multiply the bottom by x minus 2. That way I have my common denominator. But I've got to multiply the top by x minus 2. Go ahead and distribute. Be careful. This is a plus sign, so that means that's a plus 3. If that was a negative sign, I would need to distribute a negative 3. But it's positive, so it makes it fairly easy. So I get 3x minus 6. Now over on this side, again, I'm going to leave that one completely alone here x squared plus x minus 6. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to combine some like terms on top there. So an x and a 3x makes a 4x. A 3 and a negative 6 makes a negative 3. On the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. I get x squared. Um, on the outside, I get a 3x. On the inside, I get a negative 2x. That's plus x minus 6. And I notice something very, 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 very helpful here. And that's that my two denominators are exactly the same. This is awesome. This means I don't even have to worry about denominators. I guess you could cross multiply, but you're just going to end up wasting yourself a lot of time. Because my denominators are the same, that means the numerators must be the same. So since the denominators are the same, that means 4x minus 3 on top must equal 4 as well. So now I just have a really, really, really basic equation to solve. 4x equals 7. I added 3 to both sides. That means x is 7 fourths. So very, very easy there. It worked out really nicely because my denominators were the same. If they weren't, you would just have to cross multiply and do the algebra no big deal. All right, let's move on to talking about some quadratics. All right, now there's several different ways to solve quadratics. The first and easiest way is to simply factor. But remember, with a quadratic, that means you have a degree of 2. So anytime you see a degree of 2, your largest exponent is a 2, you want to have a 0 on one of the sides. I don't care what side. A huge, huge advantage is to get the x squared to be positive. So you want to move things around so that the x squared is positive. It will help you a lot. So the x squared is already a positive over here. It's a positive x squared, so that's good to go. I already have a 0 on this side. That's awesome. Now I can factor. Hopefully you guys remember how to factor. Really, really important part of pre-calculus here. So I'm going to say, okay, x squared could be broken up into x and x. 8 could be broken up into 4 times 2. Now, who do I want to be positive? Who do I want to be negative? Well, I need a negative 2 for them to add in the middle. So I'm going to need a negative 4 and a positive 2. That way I get a negative 8 at the end, and on the outside I get a uh, positive 2x, on the inside I get a negative 4x, which makes the negative 2x. Now I'm going to use that zero product property I mentioned. Because I have the product of two expressions here, one of them, either the x minus 4 must be 0, or the x plus 2 must be 0. One of these two expressions must be 0. So over here I get an option of x equaling 4, over here I get an option of x equaling negative 2. Very, very, very simple. All right, here's another quadratic. Now, this is kind of a weird quadratic because there's an expression being squared. Now, one way you could do this is to square out that expression, and you get x squared plus 26x plus 169 equals 25. You'd subtract the 25 over because you want to get that 0 there. And let's see, that would be 144, I believe. And then you would go ahead and try to factor that. Now, that's kind of an ugly one to factor because you get some really big numbers and stuff there. So another way you could do this when it already looks like this is one simple, simple way to solve this is to just take the square root of both sides. See, I couldn't do that on this previous problem, because when I take the square root of both sides, I have this expression inside the square root. That makes it kind of tricky. But because here, the entire expression x plus 13 is squared, now that square root and the square will cancel, and I get x plus 13. Now over here, don't forget, when you take a square root, you do have to have plus or minus 5. So now I'm going to have to add, or I'm sorry, subtract 13 over. Now the issue here is I've got to do this twice. I've got to do it with a positive 5. So if I do positive 5 minus 13, I'll get an answer. Or I could do negative 5 minus 13. So that does give me an answer here of negative 8 
or an answer here of negative 18. Um, so please make sure that that makes sense. But again, that was only done because you have the expression. Now, there's another method to help solving quadratics that's completing the square. It's extremely important. A lot of people hate it, but it's such an awesome way to solve quadratics. I have a whole other video coming up to show you guys how to do that. All right, here's another quadratic. Notice the difference here is there's no single value term, no um, just constant. But I do have the zero here. That's an important part. Uh, second degree there, my, pos my, uh, my x squared is positive. It's a positive 6 there. And I have the zero over here. That's awesome. It's exactly what you want to solve a quadratic. If you don't have it looking like that, make it look like that. So let's see here. I'm going to have to go ahead and factor this one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 3 is a common term I could factor out, and an x. So I factor out a 3x. I'm going to get a 2x here plus 1. Now, let me so show you how to do that real quick. One way is to just check. So if I distribute, I get 6x squared. And if I distribute back here, I do get 3x. That is correct. Also, again, just think about the fact that you're dividing out of 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then you're also dividing out an x. x squared divided by x is x. x divided by x is just, well, 1. So that makes perfect sense. Now I'm going to go ahead and use that zero product property, either this first expression times the second expression, one of them must be 0. So the 3x could be 0, or the x of 2x plus 1 could be 0. So divide both sides by 3. Didn't really need to show that work there, I guess, but I could get 0 there. Over here, I get 2x equals negative 1. Divide by 2, I get negative 1 half. There's my two possible solutions for x. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at some radical or some square root equations here. These can be a little bit tricky. We'll try to walk you through it. Um, or let me see here. Hold on. Maybe I have another one here first. Nope. Okay, this is the one I wanted. All right, so one thing to do is I, to get rid of a square root, I need to square both sides. But the trick is you cannot utilize that strategy until the square root is all by itself, being isolated. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this x to the other side simply by subtraction. So I get 31 minus 9x equals 5 minus x. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and square both sides because the square root is completely isolated. When I square the right side, I do have to square that as an expression. So I square root and the square get canceled. So I get 31 minus 9x. Over here, I do have to do the binomial square theorem or I can just walk myself through it. 5 squared is 25. On the outside, I'll get a negative 5. On the inside, I'll get a negative 5. So that's negative 10x. And then finally, negative x squared is positive x squared because negative x times negative x is positive x squared. If you need to come to the side and do 5 minus x times 5 minus x to see how I got that, go right ahead. But again, we should be pretty advanced here. So I recognize that I do have a quadratic because I have a second degree. I want that x squared to be positive. So I want this x squared to stay right where it's at. I'm going to move everybody to that right right-hand side. I'm also going to do a little bit of reordering while I'm at it. I'm going to put that positive x squared first. I'm now going to add that 9x over. So that 9x is going to combine with the negative 10x, and I get a negative 1x. I'm also going to subtract the 31 over. That way, I end up with a 0 over here. 25 minus 31 is negative 6. Now, I have a quadratic, 0 on one side, a positive x squared. Now, i got to solve it. I'm going to go ahead and factor this one, even though there's several other strategies here. But when I factor this, I get x and x. Let's see here. 6 could be 3 times 2. And I believe I need the 3 to be negative, the 2 to be positive. That way, on the outside, I get a 2x. On the inside, I get a negative 3 combining to make the negative 1x. And they multiply to get that negative 6. Now, I'm going to use that zero product property. One of these two expressions must be 0, resulting in x equaling 3 as a possibility. Or, over here, it could be 0, resulting in x equals negative 2 as a possibility. So very, very, very simple there. All right, now I want to take a look at uh, excuse me, some uh, absolute values. So let's start off with some simple absolute value, like this one right here. The only thing you have to remember about absolute value is what is inside the square root could be positive or it could be negative. So if I want this to work out to be 7, if 7 is my answer, that means that the inside of the, of the absolute value could be positive 7 or the inside could be negative 7. So again, the inside value could be positive 7 or negative 7 because when you take the absolute value of it, you would get positive 7. So now I just got to solve each one of these. So 3x equals 5. 
x equals 5 thirds. How easy was that? Over here, 3x equals negative 9. Divide by 3, I get negative 3. So there's my two answers. All right, let's take a look at a little bit of a trickier absolute value one here. But again, not really that bad overall. All right, let me get everything lined up here so it makes it easy for us to solve. Okay, so once again, remember that the inside, the inside part of the absolute value could be, you know, if this is my answer over here, it could be positive or it could be negative. If it's positive, it's going to work. If it's negative, it's going to work because it's an absolute value. So let's see, I get x squared plus 6x equals positive 3x plus 18. That's very, very easy. Or I get x squared plus 6x equals negative 3x plus 18. But very careful, that negative needs to be distributed through the expression. So it would be negative 3x, negative 18. So be very, very careful. When you switch to think about the negative, it's the entire expression. 3x plus 18 becomes negative. So negative 3x minus 18. Okay, so notice I have a quadratic here. So I want to get my x squared positive and everything on the one side. So I can get a 0 here. So that's going to be x squared. Subtract that 3x over. I get positive 3x. So Subtract that 18 over, I get negative 18 equals 0. All that went away. Now I could factor, let's see here, x and 6, x and 3. 6 times 3 makes 18. I want a positive 6 and a negative 3 here. That way they multiply to make the negative 18, add to make the 3x. So using my zero product property, x plus 6 could be 0, or x minus 3 could be 0. That means x is negative 6 and x is positive 3. All right, over here, same idea. My x squared wants to stay positive, so I'm going to add 3x over. That's going to give me a 9x, and I'm going to add the 18 over. That's going to give me an 18, and that makes that side all 0. I'm going to go ahead and factor here, x and 6, x and 3. And let's see here, both positive. That way they add up to make the 9, they multiply to make the 18. So using my zero product property, x plus 6 could be 0, which gives me an answer of negative 6. And x plus 3 could be 0, giving me an answer of negative 3. So it looks like I have three answers. Negative 6 was repeated, and positive 3, and negative 3 would be my possible solutions there for that absolute value equation. All right, one thing I would always suggest to do is always take your answers and plug them in and see if they work. If you have an answer that you found correctly and you plug it in and it does not work, it's called an extraneous solution. So don't forget about extraneous solutions. So always check your work. Always take that x value that you think is right, plug it in and see if it is right. If it doesn't work out to make the equation happy, you have an extraneous solution. You oftentimes have extraneous solutions when you're working with square roots and sometimes absolute values. So be careful and pay attention to them. That's why you should always check your work.